Welcome to St. Luke's Online Worship. We'd like to thank you for joining us this morning, and we hope that everything is well with you. Please join me in a time of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me for today's children's message. In our gospel lesson today, we talk about what it means to welcome others. We call that hospitality. And one of the examples of welcoming others that we'll hear in Scripture is offering a cup of cool water to a little one. Now, offering a cup of cold water sounds pretty simple. And today, it is really simple. If you have someone over your house, you can ask them if, you're thirst, if they are thirsty, and then you can go to your sink, pour a glass of water, maybe take some ice cubes out of the freezer, and you can offer them a nice cold glass of water in a minute. But when Jesus is speaking to his disciples, offering water was a little more complicated. There was no plumbing or uh, electricity, so you didn't have running water from a sink, and you didn't have a refrigerator to keep things cold. 
So offering a glass of cool water meant that you took the effort to go to the well to get water and then had to lug it back to your home. And if it was still cool, I think that means that it was still pretty fresh. So offering a glass of water, while simple, took effort and energy. And if we want to welcome others, that's still true. That when we welcome others, we do so on purpose. It's not something that happens accidentally. We have to do it purposefully, with intention. And it takes a little bit of effort, and it takes a little bit of energy. But it's worth it so that that person can feel truly welcomed. Now, one thing, um, when we, the next time we see one another in person, and I hope that that's not too long from now, one thing that will be a little bit different is that we'll probably be wearing masks. And if you're very young, you won't be wearing a mask. But most of us, big kids and adults, will be wearing a mask. Um, this mask, by the way, was made by Kathy Hansen. Thank you for the very pretty mask. Um, and wearing a mask is something that we will do so that we can welcome others. Because when we look at someone, we don't know um, what kind of risk factors they have, if they're extra vulnerable and um, susceptible to getting sick. But we can do our part to help keep people healthy um, simply by wearing a mask. Now, is it slightly uncomfortable? Yeah. It's a little less comfortable than not wearing a mask at all. But that little bit of discomfort, that little bit of effort and energy and intention might make a big difference to the one we are welcoming. It might mean the difference of keeping someone healthy and making them feel comfortable and safe in the worship space. So in that way, wearing a mask um, and Again, if you're very young, you probably won't be wearing one, but you'll see a lot of masks. Even though it seems strange and different, is actually an act of love and kindness. Let us pray. Loving God, you are the great teacher, and you teach us how to welcome others as you first welcomed us. Teach us to be kind and generous and loving and to welcome and love others the best we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's passage from the Gospel of Matthew is a continuation of the passage we've read for the last two weeks. To recap, the disciples are being sent out to do the work of Jesus, but they are warned that it's not easy work, that they are asked to be vulnerable and potentially put their lives at risk for the sake of their mission. Now, for the past two weeks, we've considered that role of a disciple and what it means to be sent out into such uncertainty, something we can certainly relate to in these strange times. But I think this text um, and this week is the perfect time to consider what it means to be on the other side of things, to be the one who receives the disciples, the one in the position to offer 
hospitality. I want us to think about what it means to us when we welcome someone into our home. You want them to feel comfortable, well-fed, eager to come back. I think the ultimate goal is that you want someone to feel at home. You might go out of your way to do this. You might stock your pantry with coffee even though you're not a coffee drinker. You might leave essential items out uh, where they can see them so they don't have to dig around to find certain things. Maybe you have nice towels and linens that you reserve especially for your guest. Now one time I had friends from seminary who were in the area for the night and needed a place to stay. And we invited them to stay with us and eat whatever they wanted to out of the fridge and make themselves at home. But Burton and I both had early starts to our next day, and so we actually left the house before they woke up. When Burton arrived home from work, he noticed that there was a frying pan in the drying rack and some dishes in the dishwasher, and he said, oh, that was so nice of you that you made them breakfast before you left for work. And I said, nope, that wasn't me. And we laughed thinking about the fact that they cooked in our unfamiliar kitchen and that they really did make themselves at home. We said, help yourself to anything in the fridge. And they did. When we invite people into our homes, we usually invite relatives or friends. It's not often that we invite complete strangers into our spaces. But for those offering hospitality to the disciples, that's exactly what they did. The disciples were in a vulnerable position, relying on the hospitality of others. But those welcoming them, strangers into their homes, were likewise asked to be vulnerable. So whether we are inviting someone new into our home or into our congregation, hospitality isn't always easy. Something that strikes me in this brief and poetic passage is the naming of three different types of people one might welcome. We have the prophet, the righteous person, and the little one. As much as I tried to research this point of why Jesus uses these three examples, I couldn't find something specific to what this would mean to his original audience. So I'm guessing that by naming these groups or categories, Jesus is demonstrating the expanse of the kind of welcome we are called to. Who wouldn't be quick to welcome a prophet of God if they knew they were a prophet. Unfortunately, prophets are very rarely recognized as having a message from God at the time of their message. Often prophets sound like critics with unpopular opinions, speaking out against a current culture, calling a community to repentance and change. Their messages are hard to swallow, making us confront our own sin, it's easier to reject the prophet. If we accept the prophet and take up their message as our own, we might open ourselves to the same risk and ridicule, which is often the reward of the prophet. The righteous one. That's probably an easier type to welcome, we tend to get along with other people with a similar faith in God. Although that righteous one might have a different way of worshiping God, their own traditions or liturgy, a different name for the divine, it would definitely be easier to welcome the righteous one if that righteous one wanted to worship the way we already like to worship. The little one. Now, this might be a reference to the traveling disciples or perhaps anyone who finds themselves in need of someone else's hospitality. Maybe those who are hungry, homeless, those who struggle with mental illness or addiction. The little one calls on us to share our resources, 
to question why we have and others have not, to make space for someone who others have counted out. Like Jesus, we might end up ridiculed for the type of company we keep. Remember that Jesus was known for showing hospitality to the wrong sorts of people, like tax collectors and sinners. From the prophet to the righteous one to the little ones, we are to show hospitality. This is more than welcoming people who look like me and sound like me and have similar opinions to mine, who already fit in so nicely. This is about extending genuine, sincere welcome to the people who are the hardest to fully accept. Difficult because extending welcome to them might mean that we ourselves are going to be transformed. And transformation can be challenging, though we know that the Holy Spirit is always at work in us, transforming our hearts and minds. Every time we welcome the other, we are sharing in the divine welcome that God first showed us. The prophet, the righteous person, the little one, and also the stranger, the neighbor, the one who worships God in a different way, the immigrant, the refugee, the prisoner, the sick, the differently abled, and the hungry. As we read in other places of scripture, all of these are worthy of our hospitality. Each person made in the image of God holds a piece of God's story. So each and every person is in some way that prophet, that messenger of God. And the story is incomplete. The story of God's love for all people is unfinished or at least untold if we are missing voices. Now, worshiping online has its benefits. You can participate at your convenience. You can wear whatever you like. You might be in your PJs right now. And anyone can tune into our services from across the country. That's pretty great. But one really strange thing about it is that we don't know who we are worshiping with. When there's a new person or a family in the sanctuary, um, when we're together in person, we try our best to take notice of them and to greet them. And if that new person comes back and in time becomes part of the congregation, then that person or family influences us as a community as much as we influence them. There's a give and take. We grow together. True hospitality erases that line between us and them until we are one in community. So I personally find it a lot harder to do meaningful hospitality these days. We haven't quite figured out how to be transformed by the new people in our now expanded online community. But once we've become better adapted to these times, or once we're able to be together again, there is a deep need in our homes and in our congregation and in our country for real hospitality, for sincere listening to the story of another, for opening up ourselves to someone who holds a different opinion or who has a different experience and allowing ourselves to be challenged and informed by a perspective that we hadn't considered. That is one of the most beautiful and unique things about the church that strangers and friends, prophets and little ones, righteous and sinners, wealthy and hungry, young and old, people from all walks of life come together and worship God, willing to be transformed, united by the love of God in Christ Jesus. And this offers a vision of hope for the whole world, hope of a new creation, and a hope of a kingdom of love. Amen.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, especially Ron, Baby Jack, Ewald, Carol, Terry, Glenn, Bill, Robert, Rayanne, Lee, Sharon, Kim, Fred, you, Herb, Janice, Ethel, Neb, Sharon, Alex, Linda and her son Billy, Jean, Martin, Jim, Charlotte, Ron, Patty, Ken, Eric, Jennifer and Pete, Gloria, Joe, Christopher, Lynn, Jean, Melanie, Stephanie, and Sarah. For those who are grieving, especially Nancy Dooley. For our deployed military, Patrick and Abigail. For our homebound, Lynn Manichino, Marnie, Ruth, Dale, and Lynn Tarazi. For those with other concerns, those who are unemployed, all essential workers, Ron, Nicole, Caleb, Saditha, Teddy, Aaron, and the Chicken Busso Project. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. During the June council meeting, Pam Gray was elected by the council to fill the open spot of counselor and liaison to the evangelism team. We give thanks for, for her willingness to serve and the gifts that she brings to this position. Mitch Robinson, St. Luke Council President, will represent the congregation during this installation, but we encourage those who are watching to also participate as congregation. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that Pam will help lead us in our common life, in our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Pam, you have been elected to a position of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of the household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together and with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in the congregation in the wider church in this community and in the whole world. 
you are to be faithful in your specific areas of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be an example of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your siblings in Christ, I ask, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the, of the offices to which you have been appointed? If so, please respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I asked you, will you support Pam, one of your council leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, please respond, we will, and we ask God to help and guide us. We will, and we ask God to help and guide us. Pam, I now declare to you as an that you are an installed member of the council of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your day and your deeds in peace and may the faithful servant of Christ. Amen. Amen. We would like to thank you for continuing to send in your offerings to support St. Luke. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Let us pray together in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and remember the poor. Thanks be to God.